Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome all to this next lecture. Up till now we have looked at control of a simple distillation column and by a simple distillation column what I mean is or what we mean is it is got a single feed and you get two product streams the distillate and the bottoms. Now anything beyond this that means if you get an extra feed or extra side draws extra product streams is called a complex column configuration. Okay. And these complex column configurations there are there are quite a few that are used in the industry and why these configurations are used is essentially due to economic reasons and sometimes due to feasibility reasons. Economics in the sense that the complex configuration actually uses less energy uh, or less capital cost. Uh, feasibility sometimes feasibility becomes an issue because of non ideality in the vapor liquid equilibrium. Uh, and then we get complex columns. Okay. So, now we are going to look at some common complex column configurations and their control. Let us say you got an ABC mixture A being the lightest, B being intermediate boiling and C being the heaviest. Let us say you take an ABC mixture and you get it through a pass it through a simple distillation column. Let us say nearly pure A it is an it is a A B C split that means A goes to the top small amount of B goes up all of the B C go down the bottoms small amount of A goes down. Okay. So, it is a A B C split let us say this is our situation. Now, if you look at look at the composition profile inside the column across the trace this is pure A this is B this is C. So, this is mole fraction of A this is mole fraction of B uh, let us say this is the feed composition it is a mixture of A B C up the top I am taking out a distillate that is nearly pure A down the bottoms let us say the feed is such that you got a lot of a, a small amount of A and a lot of B C. So, what that means is your feed, your feed composition is somewhere you know it is a B C mixture with a little bit of A in it. So, let us say it is more towards this B C edge. Okay. So, this is your feed composition. So, you are taking out pure A up the top B C down the bottoms. If you look at the composition profile inside the column what you will find is that the composition profile actually looks something like this and by material balance the B composition would be the bottoms would be here. Okay. These three points the distillate the bottoms and the feed should be on a straight, straight line by lever rule and the stripping profile would be something like Okay. Uh, why is this figure why am I showing you this figure two things just to explain this is the feed tray mm, yeah. this is the feed tray this is the composition on the feed tray this is the feed composition this guy right here. Now, if you look at this section, what is this section doing? This section is essentially preventing the C from going up the top. You can see you are moving towards the A B edge, the C composition is decreasing. So, the trays immediately above the feed are essentially preventing the C, the, the C from going up the top. 
what do these trays do? I mean, let me remove this. These trays are preventing the A from going down the bottoms, right? So I hope this simple figure, sim the simple figure explains what the purpose of the trays immediately above the feet tray and immediately below the feet tray is. Now, if you look at this composition, it is quite rich in B, rich in B, a bit of A, almost no C. Okay. So, for example, this composition may be, I would say let us say 80 percent, 80 mole percent B. Okay. I may have a processing situation where I would like, okay, I may have a processing situation where if I want to produce pure A, pure B, pure C, uh, the only way of doing that is, you know, if, if this is A and this is B C, then you take this B C stream, distill it further and then you will get pure B and pure C. All right. I may have a situation where purity requirement of B, which is the intermediate boiling component, purity requirement of B is not very stringent. What do I mean by not very stringent? That means, I do not want for example, 99.9 percent .9 pure B, even if the B stream is you know 80, 85, 90 percent pure, I am okay. That is acceptable. A, a common example may be that the B stream is, let us say B is a reactant, it is being recycled back to the reactor. So, even if it is it has got some amount of A or C in it, that is acceptable. You do it is not a product stream, it is just merely a recycle stream. So, even if it is impure, that is acceptable. Now, instead of producing pure A, pure B, and pure C, which would require more energy because you are getting all components that are pure, I may do a sloppy split. Uh, what I mean by a sloppy split is that I get pure A, I get pure C, and then I get a B stream that is you know it is got some amount of impurities in it like that is only let us say 90 or 85 percent pure B. Okay. In this situation because impure B is acceptable in the processing scenario that we have, I may get away with using only a single column with a side draw, single column with side draw. Where do I place the side draw? Well, this is the location where the uh, B composition is the is the highest well. So, I will place my side draw somewhere here. Okay. Also note that in the rectifying section B being heavier than A, its composition in the liquid phase would be more. Right. So, this is the rectifying section, this is the, the blue line is the rectifying profile, the green line is the composition profile in the stripping section. So, I can see that the maximum B composition that I am getting is in the rectifying zone and you also note that because B is heavier than A, it would preferentially go into the liquid phase and not in the vapor phase. So, if you compare the composition of B in the liquid phase would be more than in the vapor phase. So, you would like to take a liquid side draw. from rectifying section and I hope this ternary plot sort of explains to you or clarifies to you why I am taking out a liquid side draw because this is where I get nearly pure B. Okay. It is not nearly pure B, it is it is 80 percent or 85 percent uh, B okay. and I would like to take it in the liquid I would like to take a liquid side draw because B would B being heavier than A, it would be more in the liquid phase than in the its composition would be more in the liquid phase than in the vapor phase. All right. Okay. So, what I do now after all this blah blah blah, I have an ABC mixture, purity requirement for the B stream is not very stringent. So, I would like pure A, pure C, but a little bit of impure 
B is okay. So what I do? Well, maybe I should draw this also again. So maybe we should go to the next next page. So I've got this simple distillation column. Reflux distillate. reboil and the bottoms so what i do is i take out a liquid side draw from somewhere in the rectifying section so this is a side draw so this is the distillate bottoms this is a liquid side draw and its composition will be mostly b with a with some a and if it is close to the feed you may also get some c but c would be probably less than a okay so let us say it is about 90% b 7% a 3% c that may be a typical okay so this side draw so what i am now getting is pure a pure c and a stream that is b with a little bit of a and still smaller c right why do i use such a configuration a for capital cost reasons if i was trying to produce pure a pure b pure c i would have required at least two columns okay so two columns maybe you know i take out a up the top b c down the bottom this b c stream is sent to another column that gives you b up the top and c down the bottoms right it requires two columns alternatively i may take a b up the top C down the bottoms, and then I split this further. Take out A up the top, B down the bottoms. If I try to produce pure A, pure B, and pure C, what I will get is I need at least two columns. Also, each of the components is pure. Therefore, the amount of steam consumed, whether it is this scheme or this scheme, is large. On the other hand, since I know very well that I don't require you know uh, nearly pure b some amount of impurity in the b stream is acceptable because for example let's say it's just a recycle stream in this case i get away with one column and i get a stream which is mostly b not pure b or nearly pure b but mostly b and this can be for example recycled so this is a cheaper process that does the job consumes less steam right so an example where a liquid side draw column is used okay okay so this is a liquid side draw and the liquid side draw is typically taken out of a um, out of a from the rectifying section some somewhere in the rectifying section and the the way to do it is you'll have a trap out tray what you'll have is a tray on which the liquid will accumulate this is not a usual tray it's called a trap out tray it traps the liquid and then you got a um, side draw stream over there and a pump that will pump the liquid out okay it's so the side draw tray is not a standard tray it's a trap out tray okay so this was the case where you had small amount of a in the feed stream lot of bc mostly bc so what that essentially did was uh, my composition was here so you know my rectifying profile would go like this and therefore i'd get a section or a location in the rectifying section where the purity of b is very close to you know uh, 80 90% okay on the other hand i may have another situation where where i have a lot of a b and a small amount of c in it okay in this case if i again take a simple distillation column 
it is a simple distillation column. I am taking out pure C down the bottoms, A B up the top. If you look at the composition profile for this kind of a split, okay, again let us look at our ternary plot and see what can figure out what we can figure out from here. So, this is pure A, this is pure B, this is pure C, light, intermediate boiling, heavy components. So, since I am taking nearly pure C up the top, up the bottoms, uh, the bottom composition is close to the C vertex. Okay. Um, the way I have defined the problem, uh, the feed, feed is a lot of A B with a little bit of C. So, the feed composition will be close to, uh, let us say this is the feed composition. Okay. By material balance, my distillate composition would be in a straight line with this and it will be some place here, let us just say here. Okay. Now, if I look at my stripping profile, it would go something like this. Okay. Well, this is my rectifying profile. The green is my rectifying profile the blue is my stripping profile. So, this is the stripping profile, stripping profile and the green is the rectifying profile. Okay. Again, if you look for locations where the where the tray composition is nearly pure B or mostly B, it, it, you, you cannot call it nearly pure B. Well, this guy is near, you know, a lot of B is close to the B vertex, is closest to the B vertex. So, what that tells us, and note that in the stripping section, so this is in the stripping section, the, com, uh, the liquid com, where the liquid composition is close to the B vertex. If I look at the vapor that is in equilibrium with this liquid, its composition would be because B is lighter than C, the composition of B y B in the stripping section would be greater than x B in the stripping section. x denotes liquid phase composition, y denotes vapor phase composition. So, therefore, if I look at the vapor that is in composition uh, that is in equilibrium with with this liquid composition, that vapor would actually be richer in B. So, if this liquid is 80 percent B, the vapor in equilibrium leaving that tray would be uh, let us say 85 or 90 percent B. Okay. So, therefore, in this case, since I want to get pure C pure A and I want a B stream that is mostly B. That means, I, some amount of impurity, small amounts of impurities in B are acceptable, is acceptable. So, what I do here is again as before, instead of taking a, instead of using two columns that produce pure A, pure B and pure C, what I do is I use a single column which was doing an indirect split where you are removing the pure heavy component on the bottoms. So, what I do here is I take a vapor side draw. What does this vapor side draw and this vapor side draw will have a lot of B with uh, I do not know what will be the principal impurity that depends on where you locate it, a little bit of C and maybe a little bit of B. Yeah. Yeah, I think C would be the primary impurity here. Okay. So, let us say this may be I do not know 90 percent, 7 percent and here I do not know maybe 3 percent something like that. Okay. Uh, this may actually you know interchange that depends on where you are locating the side draw, okay. but the point is my side draw stream is essentially mostly B with a little bit of B and C impurities. All right. 
So, here I have a configuration in which if I take a vapor side draw from the stripping section, I will get. So, this stream would be most of the B goes out here. So, I will get. Okay. So, I get a lot of B small amounts of C and A. All right. So, these are two side draw column configurations that are used when you want the intermediate when it is ok to have the intermediate boiling component which is not nearly pure it should be mostly you know it is not necessary to have nearly pure B. Okay. So, these are side draw columns I may further say well. So, let us say I have got a liquid side draw column where the liquid side draw is being taken out. So, uh, I have a stream which is A B C this is the feed stream. that is my distillate that is my reflux and I am taking out a side draw. Okay. This is my bottoms. What I can do is this liquid side draw can be sent into a stripper. A stripper is just a small tower sec column section with a small reboiler down there and what this reboiler is doing you see my my stream that is coming out the side draw is essentially a lot of b and some a okay i would not like the a to come down here i would like to enhance the recovery of a which is precious so i would not like to lose out my a uh, with the side draw so what i do is i put a side rect, uh, a side what is this called a side stripper so here is a side stripper And what this side stripper does is it does not allow the A to leak down the bottoms. So, here is a side stripper complex column configuration right. In case I am taking a vapor side draw from the stripping section as was discussed earlier. I can send this vapor to a side rectifier. And what this side rectifier does is it condenses it the vapor goes to the bottom of a column section which is a small rectifier and goes up to a condenser condenses out and because I am having this reflux over here this reflux right here what that does is since this side draw is mostly B with some amount of C and almost no A. Okay. So, what this side rectifier does is it does not allow the C which is heavier than B to leave up the top. All right. So, this will be B with any amount of A that was coming along with it, but no C. Right. So, this side rectifier essentially enhances the what the hell did I do here? Oh, sorry. So, this is A this is C, this is B, yeah. Okay. And the liquid that is dropping down the column is sent back to the column. The side draw, vapor side draw, which was a lot of B, some amount of C, and a very small amount of A. Well, if you put a side rectifier there, uh, this is a side, yeah, this is a side rectifier. If you put a side rectifier there, it does not allow any of the C to go up the top. right? So, this is a complex column configuration with a side rectifier. Okay. Uh, how do we control these things? Well, that should become obvious to you and I think first things what is the what are the degrees of freedom. So, you got a valve here which is not in your hands, uh, pressure is sort of fixed, you got to control what? Uh, these are the valves uh, you can also adjust how much side draw you are taken out 
I am not drawing a valve here because whatever is the reflux everything has to go down here okay. or if I do draw a valve here well this valve will be used for bottoms level control all right. So, let us see these are all the independent valves feed is not in my hands it is coming from an upstream process for example, the reactor. So, our total number of valves is excluding the feed is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, the, I have got 10 valves that can be adjusted. Of these 10 valves, one would go for main column pressure, pressure control, one valve which probably would be this guy, you see these, these guys the ones in blue will go for pressure control. Okay. Then what about level control? Well, if I look at level control, let us say I am controlling top level using this. I will also have to control this level. Let us say I am doing that using this. So, 1, 2, I also have to control this level. So, this is also gone. I also have to control this level, let us say I am doing that using this, so this is also gone. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 of the valves go for level control. How much am I left with? 10 minus 4, 5, 6, 10 minus 6 is 4, my degrees of freedom is 4. That means, the operator has got 4 things in his hands to adjust. Uh, to get the kind of separation that he wants all right what are those four things the reflux the amount of side draw that is being taken out two how much reflux are you having in the side rectifier three and how much steam you are putting in the main column four right so these are the four things that the operator is free to adjust to ensure that he is getting pure a pure c and pure b or nearly pure b right. Uh, similarly, if I look at a side strip, maybe I should do that, uh, well since I have removed it anyway. So, if I look at a side stripper column, this was a side rectifier column. If I look at a side stripper column, what I have here in that case, what I have in that case is, uh, that is what I have got, this is my main column. feed valve of course, feed is coming from upstream. So, it is not in my hands. I have got the main condenser goes into a reflux drum I take out reflux. Uh, then I have got a side stripper ok. So, a liquid side draw which is sent to a small side stripper which has got a small reboiler okay, and the vapor is sent back. Okay, so, this is my side stripper configuration. How many independent valves have I got? Well, if I draw a valve on this, this valve will typically be fully open because there is no point taking extra pressure drop in sending the vapor from here to there. The vapor already has to uh, overcome the resistance of the trays as well as the liquid that is stuck on the trays in this set side rectifier. No point throttling this valve because then the vapor will take extra pressure drop all right and that would be unnecessary ok. So, if I draw this valve this will be fully open alternatively you can think of it as this valve is adjusted to maintain the pressure in the side rectifier, but the in the side stripper this is the side stripper scheme in the side stripper. So, if I draw this valve it is fully open or it is used for pressure control, but there is no point controlling pressure because I would like the pressure of this to be about the same as the pressure of the main column. Why is that? That is because 
if I have, I mean, this is just a very, very rough explanation. If I look at the xy plot vapor liquid equilibrium, vapor, vapor, y is vapor in equilibrium with liquid of composition x, okay. If this is the xy curve for a certain pressure, as the pressure is increased, this curve will move closer and closer to the 45 degree line, okay. So, as pressure is increased, the x y plot, x y v l e plot vapor liquid equilibrium diagram moves closer and closer to the 45 degree line. What that means is the separation is becoming more and more difficult. So, at a higher pressure, the same separation is more difficult, therefore, it will consume more steam. All right. So, therefore, you would like the pressure of this column which is the side rectifier to be as low as possible. As low as possible means that you take as little pressure drop as you can across this side rectifier and what that means is if you are drawing this valve, it should be fully open. So, that, it, so that there is no pressure drop across this valve. Right? And what that would do is make the pressure of this column the same as you know the side uh, the re side rectifier the same as the main column. Okay. Okay. So now, how many valves do I have? Well, I've got excluding the feed 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, total number of valves is 9. If I look at pressure controllers, there would be this pressure controller. There is one pressure control, one valve goes for pressure control. If I look at levels, well, I have got 1, 2 and 3, 3 levels to control. So, if I look at levels, so let us say I am controlling the top level using this valve, this valve goes for level control of the reflux drum, uh, this valve goes let us say for level control of the side rectifier bottom sump this valve let us say it goes for level control of the bottoms in the or, or the sump in the main column. So, I take out three valves for level control. I also have the specification that this valve is fully open right. So, what I say is well one of the valves is fully open. Okay. So, what does that leave me with? That leaves me with 9 minus 3, 4, 5. Degrees of freedom again is 4. So, what are the 4 valves that the operator can adjust to get the kind of separation that, that is desired is he can adjust the reflux that is the way it has been shown. He can adjust the reflux, side draw flow rate, he can adjust the steam in the side stripper and he can also adjust the steam to the main column all right that's just by the way uh, i explained it like this but you will note that this configuration makes sense where this stream is a small stream okay so because this stream is a small stream probably you will have level control uh, this way and not that way because uh, the amount of A that is coming in the feed is small, right. But the point is in these columns side rectifier side stripper column, the degrees of freedom is 4 that means the operator can adjust 4 things to get the kind of separation that he wants. Well, if I do not have the side rectifier, if I do not have the side stripper, Then what is the degrees of freedom? Well, you got to control one pressure, you got to control two levels, right. So, degrees of freedom what does it become? It becomes actually 3. So, for a side draw column, whether you are taking a liquid side draw of the rectifying section or a vapor side draw of the stripping section, degrees of freedom is 3. For a side rectifier or a side stripper, degrees of freedom is 4. That additional degree of freedom comes from the fact that you can 
you can adjust the reflux or the reboil in the side rectifier or stripper all right so uh, now we will talk about control structures for these columns and that probably is best done uh, using the presentation that we'll do all right so now we are going to look at how do we control side stream columns or side draw columns like i explained previously in the separation of ternary, ternary mixtures if you want all three pure components more than one distillation column is needed you know you need at least two distillation columns sometimes it is more economical to use side streams and i also have explained the context in which it is more economical to use side streams now if you consider an ab mixture and let us say you got a small small amount of a well then you take a liquid side draw that was also explained okay alternatively if you consider again an abc mixture where c is the impurity then you get a vapor side stream from the stripping section this was also explained all right now we get to controlling these things well feed is under flow control that's clear okay uh, the top condenser duty is used to maintain the column pressure that's clear the bottom sump level is maintained by adjusting the bottom stream flow rate that's also clear okay the principal impurity in the distillate which is actually nearly pure a is small b uh, well b is the principal impurity in the, the distillate the principal impurity in the bottom stream is again what it's again b so this bottom stream will be mostly c with a little bit of b okay the side stream is going to be mostly b with a little bit of a and maybe some c also okay so what we do here is i think this now since we have said previously that i'm doing you know a is in small amount the component flow rate of a in the feed stream is small bc is bc or large so therefore this flow rate will be small since the distillate flow rate is small it would it doesn't make sense to control the level this way what you would you should what should probably be done is control the level using reflux because reflux is the larger stream all right and then you control the composition this way okay so how much reboiler duty how much steam are you putting well if the amount of impurity which is b in the bottom stream is increasing you increase the reboiler duty what that would do is the b that is falling down won't fall down right if the amount of impurity that is component b in the distillate is increasing what you would do is reduce the distillate what that would do is that would cause the reflux to go up and what that what that in turn would do is uh, the flow rate of distillate will go down and therefore since the reflux has since the reflux has gone up what that would do is it will prevent the b from going up the top right if the composition of b the purity of b in the side draw is increasing then what you do is you increase the side stream flow rate right that means the b is accumulating somewhere here if the b is accumulating somewhere here its its composition will go up if its composition is going up you take out more side draw so i hope this is clear note that there is this additional control degree of freedom how much side draw you are drawing out by the way a similar control scheme will also be there if this was a vapor side stream right a very similar control scheme will work here also yeah here are alternative simpler simpler schemes and i say they are simpler uh, because well we'll explain this so 
I have got a lot of small amount of A and a lot of B C coming in the feed all right. I would like to take out most of the A up the top C down the bottoms and mostly B down the side uh, in the side stream. Now, since A is in a small amount what I do is I flow control the distillate stream when I am flow and I set this set point to be whatever is the largest expected component flow rate of A. So, let us say the largest expected component flow rate of A is 5 kilo moles per hour on usually what I uh, what I get is you know maximum amount of component A that you are expecting in the feed is let us say 5 kilo moles per hour. So, this set point will be set at 5 kilo moles per hour. Now, even if the amount of A that is coming in the feed is less than 5 let us say 3 or 4 kilo moles per hour and I have set this at 5 the amount of loss of B here is still very small at 1 kilo moles per hour 1 or 2 kilo moles per hour all right. Then the level control is this way. Now, if this level is increasing what does it mean? If the level in the reflux drum is increasing what does it mean? You see it means I am sending too much B to the top which is why the level is increasing because the A flow rate cannot go beyond 5 kilo moles per hour. If still the level is increasing that means the B is being sent to the top. So, what do I do? I open the reflux valve and since this reflux is going to ultimately end up here I also open the side draw valve. I hope that makes sense. I am forcing the A or the distillate flow rate to be constant. If the level is increasing all of the material will be sent back through the action of the level controller back into the column. This material which is being sent back into the column has to be taken out some place. What does accumulation of level in the reflux drum or increase in level in the reflux drum mean? It means that essentially B is being sent to the top. Okay. So, therefore, what I do is because the reflux is increasing that means more B needs to be taken out. So, what do I do? If the reflux increases by 10 percent I increase my side draw by 10 percent. Okay. So, I essentially I keep the side draw in ratio with the reflux. Okay. Of course, then I have a temperature controller that adjusts the steam and what that temperature controller is doing is preventing the B from leaking out the bottoms. So, if the temperature is increasing uh, or if the temperature is decreasing that means too much of light B is going down increase the steam. So, that the B does not drop out the column. Okay. Uh, notice that this is a very elegant scheme in the sense that you do not have any composition controllers you only have one temperature controller the rest is you know standard flow control level control ratio control pressure control etcetera etcetera it is a very simple scheme. Flip side most of the time you are losing some amount of B with the A right. If the component A flow rate goes beyond 5 for whatever reason this control structure is bound to fail because this set point has been set you will have to essentially increase this set point. So, what an operator would do is uh, you will find that you know there is too much A coming out here because I am not taking out the A here. So, that A is essentially going back down here and it is coming down in the side stream. So, if you are doing uh, some amount of a if you are doing a composition analysis on the side stream you find that too much A is coming out. So, what the operator would do then is essentially increase this flow set point of A that would allow the A to get removed from the top of the column. Okay. Here is the other scheme and what we are doing here is here you have a vapor side draw and you would use a vapor side draw when the amount of C in the ABC mixture is very small. So, C is essentially uh, so, the feed stream is essentially A B with a little bit of C. So, that little bit of C is being removed down the bottoms. Since you are removing that little bit of C down the bottoms and you do not expect that C flow rate to go beyond a certain maximum what I do is I hold this bottoms at that maximum flow rate. 
since this maximum flow rate is in itself very small even if the amount of C that is coming in the feed is less than that maximum the amount of the, the loss of what would it be the loss of B down the bottoms would not be very large because the flow rate of this stream itself is very small compared to the feed and the distillate and the side draw right. So, therefore, I just flow control this and this set point will be max expected what max expected C in feed ok. Uh, now, the level in the bottoms needs to be controlled you cannot control it the bottoms of uh, so the level is controlled using the steam and that makes sense because this you know the bottom stream is very small in terms of flow rate you cannot control a level using the bottoms right ok. Of course, feed is under flow control the rest is self explanatory pressure is controlled using condenser duty that is standard distillate level is controlled using distillate rate that is also standard and you hold the reflux constant. Of course, if the temperature is increasing a tray temperature is controlled using the side draw if this temperature is increasing what does it mean uh, this is essentially B with a little bit of C. Okay. So, if the temperature is increasing I think what it means is amount of C that th that is the impurity is actually increasing. So, if the temperature is increasing too much C is accumulating what would you do would you increase the side draw would you decrease the side draw you decrease the side draw so that the C goes down ok I am just thinking out loud here if the temperature is decreasing what that means is the amount of C is actually going down. So, B composition is going up that means B is accumulating here that means I need to take out more of this side draw right yeah that is what it means I think that is the way it, it, it would it would work ok. So, again this control structure is very simple in the sense that it uses only flow controllers level controllers pressure controllers and temperature controllers it avoids the use of composition control of course you are losing some amount of B here because you are holding the flow rate of B constant. Now, if in the feed stream the component flow rate of B goes beyond this set point for whatever reason then what would happen is that B would start coming out here ok. Uh, no, no, no C sorry if the C component flow rate goes up than this set point that C has no way out of the column. So, that C is going to end up here ok and if that is the case you are taking a composition measurement here you know you will essentially lose temperature control because the C has nowhere to go and what then you will have to do is essentially increase the set point of this guy. So, that the C finds its way out ok. So, I hope these side draw columns are clear uh, now what we will do is this feed stream should actually be going below this yeah that is that is the mistake that I want to point out side stripper what do you do well I think it is self explanatory level control well what do you do in the side stripper ok if the this is pure A this is nearly pure B this is nearly pure C ok. Primary impurity here is small b uh, primary impurity here is what is being sent back sent back is primary impurity here is A primary impurity here is B ok. So, if the amount of B that is leaking up the top starts to increase what do you need to do you need to increase the reflux ok. So, that is what this guy does if the composition if the impurity level of B in the distillate is going up 
you increase the reflux. Similarly, what does this guy do? If the amount of impurity B that is leaking down the bottoms goes up, that means too much of the light stuff is leaking down, leaking down the leaking down the bottoms, increase the reboil so that it does not leak down, that is what this guy does. Okay. Uh, what does this guy do? The purpose of the rectifier, side rectifier is to not allow the A to leak down the bottoms of the side rectifier. So, if the composition of A in this bottoms from the side rectifier is increasing, you need to increase the reboiler duty, side rectifier reboiler duty that is what this guy does. Okay. What about this guy? Well, if the composition of B in the side stream is increasing, what that means is the B is accumulating towards this section of the column. I need to increase the flow rate so that that B which is accumulating in that section is taken out, finds a way out of the column. Okay, so that's what this guy does. The rest is standard pressure control using condenser duty, bottoms level control using the bottom stream, uh, reflux drum level control using the distillate stream, and the bottom sump in the side rectifier the level is controlled using the uh, using the bottom stream from the side side rectifier okay so this is again a oh sorry this is a side stripper i'm sorry okay so the bottoms in the side stripper is its level is controlled by the corresponding bottom stream right that's what this guy does so i hope this is clear now side rectifier well, something very similar pressure control, level control, level control, level control. I hope this is clear. Okay. So, we have the pressure controller at the top, uh, we have reflux drum level control using the distillate that is standard, the bottom sump level control using the bottom stream that is also standard. Uh, then we have level controller of the side rectifier using the bottoms from the side rectifier that is also standard okay uh, pressure control of the side rectifier using the condenser duty that is also standard okay level control of the reflux drum in the side rectifier using uh, using using the corresponding side distillate stream that is also standard okay now what does this compose again the distillate is essentially pure A with a little bit of B. The bottoms is pure C with a little bit of B. The side draw is essentially pure B with a little bit of uh, what the hell, what will be here with a little bit of C, okay. And that C is, yeah, the C is not taken up, there. okay, fine. All right. So, what does this composition controller do? If the impurity of B in the distillate is increasing, increase the reflux, so that the B is not taken out, that is what this guy does. What does this composition controller do? If the impurity B in the bottoms is increasing, that means the light B is actually leaking down the bottoms, well in that case increase the steam, so that the light stuff does not leak out, it is sent back. Okay, that is what this guy does. What does this composition controller do? If the impurity C in the distillate from the side rectifier is increasing, increase the reflux. You know, too much C is going out the top instead of taking it out, put it back in. That is what you do using this guy. And what about this guy? Well, if the composition of B here is increasing that means the b is accumulating here it has to find a way out of the column it can't go up the top it can't go down the bottoms what do you do you increase the side draw rate so that the b that has accumulated as reflected in the increased composition of b it finds a way out all right 